Okay, so again, back to the small world, uh, this composition seems like freezy frames, let's say, of uh, the reality, so captured moment of reality. Um, is uh, this the way that you transpose uh, your uh, inner aesthetic vision, um, something that, that, as you were saying before, creates you emotions? Yeah, I'm, I'm not, um, I don't set out to, to produce a freeze frame, but I, I set out to create a lot, maybe for example, in a in a room with a lot going on, we, I, one of the scenarios in in uh, July was a Bewley's cafe. So there were a lot of different things happening, a lot of different moments happening. And uh, uh, for example, there might be a family in one corner, and there's a, there's a little row going on between two of the children or something. In another corner, two women are gossiping. In another corner, there's an old grandfather talking to his granddaughter. Um, and then there's another place where there's a, a lover's uh, feud going on and uh, and there's a guy looking in the mirror and uh, finding a new uh, love and so on. But all those things are happening uh, and it just so happens that uh, some there's a it's almost as if you did take a photograph but of a lot of different moments, a lot of different lives and, and you pick them up at that moment. But But they're all in a different in a way, in a different moment, but but at the same time, they're all together in the same room. So it's it's not freeze frame in one sense, but uh, and I don't deliberately want to. I'm not trying to synchronize all these things so that they work together. It's just it's it's very um, casual, random <coughs> uh, situation that uh, they just happen to overlap. This this um, thing that's going on between the children in the corner, the lovers in the other corner, they have nothing to do with one another. They just happen to be. Um, in transit yeah. at the same time and you, you catch each one at a certain moment and and it, it just happens to be the same moment in in the big picture but in the small picture it's their own moment so uh somebody else used the expression freeze frame it wasn't my uh, it wasn't what i set out to do but i i recognize that it is it's a, it's a good expression to capture the the idea just to try and um uh, analyze it for people it's a good way to 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 say uh, what i do also the fact that you look through different gaps and when i when i did the um, catwalk one for example i deliberately created um, little gaps in the wall so when you walk along it's almost as if you're looking at a at a movie yeah uh, i don't know whether you tried that or not but you actually yes. see the the models almost like charlie chaplin's moving along mm -hmm. because the, there's dark light dark light and each time the light comes you see a different position of them as you're moving so it's not even frozen in that sense there is movement to it as well so i think there's a lot of um, a lot of things that uh, that I, I i achieved without necessarily setting out to achieve but i found i can do something Oh, that's interesting. Uh, can I do something else? That's interesting. And now it's evolving. Then I think uh, I'm excited to take it on to the next stage. But don't ask me what that's going to be. <laughs> so I don't know. I just it's uh, part of that evolution, the hopper mentality that I have. That uh, I I know I'm going to take it on to something else. But I also know that this is something I've always wanted to say. There's been something inside me wanting to be sad, and in a way I'm 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 saying I'm it's this technique that I've uh, I've learned is allowing me to say it and that's it's a wonderful sense of freedom mm -hmm, to do that mm -hmm. and the beautiful thing is that you are capturing moments you know of our days yes. so family the train and uh, the catwalk is yes. absolutely you know something yes. it's of uh, our period that's so the, right that's every very day interesting yeah one. what's the word in Italian for every day um, yeah. ogni giorno yes uh, yeah, si, yeah, si. yeah. Si. yeah. It's uh yeah it's it's that's what's important to me as I say it's not murder it's not war it's just a, a typical thing that mm -hmm. happens in our day. Il quotidiano exactly mm. the daily yeah, quotidiano exactly, yeah. yes Quot yeah. quotidiano <laughs> yes that's the word I was trying to think yeah. of. Uh, I think that's um, that's exactly what I'm what I'm trying to do it's everyday things and uh, and it's amazing how much that means to people that's what surprised me it means a lot to me but when I find other people relate to it and they say I love that moment I love the way that's what's happening there yeah. is just uh, that's that's fantastic and uh, and it's not as i say it's not a, a drama or it's not some major development in human history it's just a moment in somebody's life absolutely 
And uh, uh, what materials, uh, let's say, do you prefer to, to work with, of course, now, but also in the future, something that maybe you would like to experiment? <laughs> well, the material I work at uh, with mostly is, is wax. Uh, and uh, I start off with aluminium, an aluminium frame, if you like, or an, an aluminium armature, because that's quite flexible. And in the early stages, if I want to, for example, if I have, uh, like the, if you can imagine your skeleton inside, if I want to bend the arm, I can do it because the aluminium is flexible it won't right. break but I can I can and usually even at an advanced stage in the sculpture I can move something like an arm if I think that's a better position mm -hmm. for it um, or the fingers I can move the fingers in the hand and, and get an expression and actually that's one of the things I love about Italy is your ability to express yourself with your hands <laughs> and, uh, and when you when I, t I talk about uh, absorbing things I'm in a cafe in Italy and uh, I don't have to watch very carefully, but you can't help but notice that people are uh, really animated with their hands. So, so I bring that into my sculptures as well. And I think uh, Irish people are not as, as animated with their hands. So sometimes they, but also they, they're, they're struck by, by that because initially you mightn't notice so much, but Irish people notice um, the use of hands much more uh, mm -hmm. if, if it's used in a, in a sculpture, for example. So. I, f I find that um, uh, the wax and the aluminium allows me that flexibility. I also love wax because it's, um, it's possible to preserve it. Um, it, it. It is a little bit fragile, but not as fragile as people think. And, I, and also I'm able to use colour with it and mix colour into it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've uh, been, again been working on ways to do this. This is part of my voyage of discovery to, to find better and better ways to make the, the pieces look more, relate more and more to what people are looking at the I mean I think that I, I love abstract art and I love a lot of um, different kinds of uh, contemporary expressions but I think there's a hunger in people to actually uh, to understand what they're looking at sure. and uh, sometimes we ask too much from them and I think if I can make it simple for them and there's there's a deeper message perhaps mm -hmm. but at least they don't have to figure out that's a man that's a woman that's a child that's a sad face then you look beyond that and and that's where the art uh, can become deeper mm -hmm. you don't have to be very profound or very complicated I think so for me wax is a is a lovely medium to work with and um, uh, also I then I had to find different ways to spray it because as you know I use uh, uh, real fabrics with the, because again I I mean I, I love to make uh, to sculpt fabrics and I began by setting up let's say um, a mannequin with a with a, a dress or a suit or or uh, some sort of a garment and you could arrange the pleats or the folds and, right. and then you could work at it at your leisure because unlike a model who has to move that that piece will never move and so you can you can work for days or weeks and get the, the thing perfect and that's where the idea of why don't I actually produce something with the real fabric on it and uh, the idea then of uh, dressing the figures and so on draping them and um, and I, I, again, I love that use of colour and being able to combine. And the funny thing is, again, Italy has such an, Im an impact on me because uh, when I go to Italy, I'm immediately struck by how fashion conscious oh. they are and everybody <laughs> loves style and everyone is into that. And, and I can't help but express that in my, in my work because uh, I'm not, I'm not a, a genius or a, an expert or anything like that, but I can't help but I, I know what's what the fashion is this year what's coming next year uh, before they know it in Dublin because I'm seeing it on the streets there and everyone is, embraces it immediately because it's part of the, your culture sure. so um, so I became very influenced by that without necessarily trying very hard uh, and even the, and the catwalk was a reflection of that I, I n I've never been to a fashion show but I can imagine what it's like and also I see photographs all the time and you see the magazines and, you, and even you see the people walking on the street and, and so often they're, they're like models, True. Uh, they are models, but uh, that's, to me that's, it's beautiful to be able to use something like that in a figurative sense and express another idea, mm -hmm. but that's very relevant to our everyday lives. There is almost, let's say, uh, no more uh, border, no more limit between, let's say, the catwalk and the street. Exactly, yes. exactly, yeah. yeah, yeah. And in the catwalk, I also uh, produced at the in the back the the changing room, the fitting room, yeah. uh, and that's <coughs> where uh, it's the, the the unreal world is out front, like where it's it's kind of artificial. You're you're there's people walking on the catwalk, and the audience are actually very are almost 
more uh, uptight than the models because they, they have to be seen to be well dressed and in the right mode and so on. Uh, but in at the back, it's chaotic and mm -hmm. people are changing and they don't care what what, what, what they're, they're wearing or what they're not wear wearing. It's just all going on and tumbling over one another and so on. So I like that idea. And one of my daughters gave me some photographs that were taken in the in the uh, changing room of a the theatre. So that's where I got a lot of the ideas and even what they have on the tables mm -hmm. and so on. So I try to, again, uh, produce props that will that will continue to reinforce this sense of reality. And what I'm doing mostly is one third life size, so the, the figures are about knee high, <coughs> but everything else has to be proportioned. The right. chairs, the tables, even if I find a can of Coke, sometimes in a little market in, in Florence, I go and I, I search for these kind of things. And if I find, I'm so happy if I find even one little prop that I can use that adds to reality. And what I often say is that if you take a photograph, for example, the model of the train that I had with people sitting in the train, if you take a photograph, you look through the window of the train, you say, that's, they must be full size mm -hmm. because, because you see a can of Coke there and that, that, uh, that tells the message much better than I could by saying they're actually, you know, they're supposed to be full size people. They know that a cup and saucer, it, it's proportionate. So, so, you know, that's a cup and saucer so therefore that must be the size of the head of the person there. Right. That, that person must be the full size. So your, your kind of mind works mm -hmm, that way. Mm -hmm. So I, I use the props in reverse to kind of create this feeling that actually these are, these are real people. This mm -hmm. is um, Lilliput, you know, the, yes, <laughs> the yes. story of Lilliput. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, the, the, the author was from Dublin again. He, he was a storyteller. And I always loved the idea of tiny little people that you could, um, you could almost get to do what you wanted to do. And again, that's what my my little figures do for me. I, I say, I want I want you to sit there and I can bend the legs and I can put them sitting in a, in a chair or I can put them with a cross face or a happy face or whatever. So in a way, I mean, uh, I mean um, I, I'm able to manipulate all of these things to express what I want to say. And, uh, and I, that's, that's what makes me happy.